What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. Week 7 here of the SFL. Been a couple weeks since I recorded for this series. I've been knee-deep in my other series, Sentinels Franchise. And if you have not watched that or are not currently watching that, go check it out. It's pretty good. It's a relocation franchise, and we are making a deep deep playoff push but here in the sfl we got a big one today in store for you guys taking on a division rival and also a subscriber quarterback today that would be one derek Deragosa. shout out at d 24 in the comments i hope that you are watching this episode today because you are going to get to see your creative player live in action so we have to deal with a 78 overall star development quarterback Derek is 6'3", 190, 24 years old, out of the University of Indiana. And taking a look at Derek here, looks like he can throw the ball pretty deep. Uh, got some good throw power and also can throw it pretty accurate as well. And Derek also looks like he's pretty mobile as well. So number 12, that is also pretty funny, seeing as how the uh, Brooklyn Nighthawks other quarterback Aaron Rodgers is here and I had to drop him down to 70 just some to make sure that Derek gets all the snaps today but of course Derek uh being number 12 that was Aaron Rodgers's former number so as long as knock on wood Derek doesn't get hurt shouldn't have to worry about seeing a rod today and this should be a fun and exciting matchup but before we dive into this game against the Brooklyn Nighthawks, let's check out the stats of all of our subscribers around the league. And if you guys don't know what's going on here, go back and check out episode one. And if you would like to join the SFL, comment down below your player info, and I will add you to one of these created teams. But let's take a look at the stats of all of our subscribers so far in the league. Starting things out with the Canton Condors in the AFC North. We have wide receiver Braden Keys. Fourth on the team in terms of receiving yards, but Braden did join pretty late into the SFL, like week four, week five. He has 104 yards and no touchdowns so far, averaging only 11.6 uh, yards per reception and 34.7 uh, yards per game. So Braden is the fourth leading receiver on the team in terms of yardage. And then we also got a couple of defenders here as well. We have Eli Sakowitz with 17, or I'm sorry, 20 tackles. And no, sa no sacks, no picks yet, no TFLs, but he does have two pass deflections and a forced fumble and a fumble recovery. So that is pretty good to see. And then we have Mike Collins here out of Rutgers. He has 17 total tackles, a big interception, and I'm sure that that uh, has propelled the team to, I believe, only their one win on the season. So Canton Condor's kind of struggling, but still a lot of season left to go. Three subscribers on the San Juan Tigers over in the NFC South. We have wide receiver Nick Stoyer here. Only eight receptions so far for 90 yards, but does have a big touchdown reception. And I think the Tigers are about 500, maybe uh, somewhere around that. We also have another receiver as well but for some reason i don't think that they are getting targeted tight end st james we play the tigers actually next episode so i'm gonna go into the depth chart and see what's going on because my man is way too good to not have any reception so far on the season and then we do have a newly added cornerback dior love only been in the sfl for a couple weeks he has eight solo tackles so far. Albuquerque Armadillos are next in the AFC West, and we have tight end Bjorn Jeffrey, who only got added a couple weeks ago, but he's already making a strong impact. Seven receptions, 65 yards, and a touchdown reception as well. So that is good to see. And then on the defensive side of the ball, we have Arturo Esquivel, tied for second on the team in sacks with two. He also has 21 tackles and a TFL. So Arturo is uh, definitely getting in the backfield, causing some havoc back there and being a pretty good option on the Armadillo's defense. Austin Lumberjacks, of course, in our division, the AFC East, we have subscriber quarterback Michael Yakin. Looks to be playing pretty good. 1,300 yards, eight touchdowns to five picks. Touchdown interception ratio could be a little bit better, but curious to see where Yakin stands in terms of passing in the entire nfl so we got well there's jordan love by the way our quarterback and michael i mean he's you know he's up there nothing uh nothing too crazy but definitely nothing to scoff at as he is pretty much doing his thing over there in austin 
And then we also have a tight end, James Briner as well. James Briner here, he was one of the original members to be added to the SFL, so shout out to James. He has 189 yards on 20 receptions and a touchdown as well. So making a little bit of noise here. And the Austin Lumberjacks, we played them once already, and I think we play them again sometime. Well, it might actually be the last game of the season. Virginia Beach Blues here in the NFC South. We have wide receiver Yeezy Fuentes, who also was one of the original members of the SFL as well. He is a third on the team in yards at 178, 17 receptions, averaging 29.7 yards per game, and also has a big touchdown as well. And only four wide receivers on the Blues have a touchdown, so Yeezy is tied for first on his team in terms of touchdowns. Dublin Shamrocks are next in the NFC East, and we have subscriber quarterback Jesse Buzo Jr., who we played a couple weeks ago, and we did beat him, but Jesse and his squad did get their first W on the season. 1,000 yards, roughly, and uh, seven touchdowns to three picks. So pretty good touchdown-interception ratio going on there. And Jesse is also averaging 265.8 yards per game. And look at the brother-subscriber combination of the Paris Black Knights. In the NFC North, we have Jaden Hayes, who got added a couple episodes as well, a couple episodes ago as well, which is why you see Mac Jones still has more yards than him. Huh? But 392 so far and three touchdowns to three picks. So definitely want to see that uh, touchdown interception ratio go up, but still playing uh, decent. And then we have his brother here, Caleb Hayes, who is fourth on the team in yards at 117. That is on 10 receptions and also has a big touchdown from his brother as well. Michael Briner here of the Oakland Wizards in the AFC West, brother of James Briner, who we just showed on the Lumberjacks. He is third on the team in sacks, albeit at only 0.5, but the Wizards don't seem to have too many sacks. So Briner is right there and one or two games he could be leading. Also has four tackles for loss and 11 tackles as well so far on the season. Rocky D. Bernardo on the Sacramento Sentinels here in the NFC West. Rocky is playing pretty good. Only played a couple games so far this season, but he already has 712 yards, three touchdowns and zero interceptions so far on the season so his past touchdown touchdown interception ratio is a very good and he's only been in the league a couple of games so i feel like he could be a pretty big staple here in the sfl two subscribers here on the orlando orbits in the afc south we have power back out of ucla johnny waters who we just played a couple episodes ago and he we did win that game but johnny did run very strong and viciously he has 26 carries so far for a buck 74 averaging though 6.7 yards on the ground so he is gonna be a problem i feel like here in the sfl and then we also have free safety flash parker who looks to be playing pretty good he has one interception on the campaign also 25 tackles and a big pass deflection as well can't forget Derek Daragosa, who again we're playing today he's almost caught up to rogers now in terms of yards 656 so far through the air seven touchdowns to three interceptions that's a very good touchdown to interception ratio and he is also running a 102 quarterback rating so Derek uh we play him today he might be a problem Jack Mavros here on the Honolulu Dragons in the NFC West only kicker in the SFL which is pretty cool to see Jack has five of his punts downed within the 20 and also a long of 71 is that the longest punt so far in the season gotta check that out it is not the longest but it is close the longest is 73 so jack mavro's having a 71 yard punt that's pretty good and it stacks up amongst some of the best punters here in the league and of course can't forget about your very own toronto thunderbird here subscriber mike oxmall rookie out of miami he has 116 yards and no touchdowns so far but i feel like the last couple of games, and I know this because he's on our team, Mike has starting, has been starting to come alive. So before we dive into this one, I don't want to make this take too long. I know the intro is already probably longer than uh, what it typically is because of showcasing all the subscriber stats. But hey, this is your guys' series, and it's important to me that I let you all know how you're doing. But taking a quick look at the Nighthawks who we play today. First time seeing them, of course, Derek Daragosa already talked about him a lot brian robinson who's on the st louis sentinels 
our running back, or was, actually we traded him on my other series. Brian Robinson and Leonard Fournette are going to be the running back. CJ Ham, really good fullback. But then their receiving room here, tons and tons of weapons. Gonna need the Vaseline today, I presume. Jamar Chase, Adam Thielen, Michael Thomas, Isaiah Hodgins even as their fourth option. Not too bad. Their tight end room's not great with Jonu Smith and Colby Parkinson. Peyton Hendershot back there as well. But offensive line is stacked. They got Tristan Wirfs on the left side. They got Landon Dickerson. Center, Olu Oluwatimi is their one weak spot in the middle. But then Trey Smith as the right guard and Lane Johnson as the right tackle. Their offensive line is stacked. Calais Campbell on the defensive line to go along with James Houston, opposite of him. And then David Anyamata, Justin Jones. So their defensive line and their linebackers, not really nothing to write home about. Josh Uche. He's all right. Uh, five, six middle linebackers, but a lot of them are injured, it looks like. So Anthony Walker is going to be manning the middle. Baron Browning. So like I said, uh, linebackers, not really that great. Devin Witherspoon, Levi Wallace, Jeff Okuda, not the best cornerback room. Ife Melifonwu, not really the best free safety option. Brian Branch is good and young at uh, strong safety. And then Jack Podlesny and Ryan Wright. So a bunch of no-name punters and kickers there. But we are going to go ahead and dive in here. 5-1 and one Toronto Thunderbirds versus the 1-5 and five Brooklyn Nighthawks. And we are going to be severely undermanned today. We got Miles Garrett hurt. We got Chris Olave hurt. We got Joe Tooney, Darren Waller, Kyron Williams. So our team is definitely suffering the injury bug. But if you guys are fired up for some more SFL content, please like the video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And without further ado, let's get down to Brooklyn and get ready for the game. So Ryan Wright and the Nighthawks going to boot it on back to the Toronto Thunderbirds to start. I like the end zone here, and I like the jerseys for the Brooklyn Nighthawks as well. They are so fresh and so clean, but I hope to dirty them bad boys up today as I hope that we get lots of pressure. Our team is 5-1, and one, if you can believe that. 5-1 and one on the season. We do got a very good team. But we are going to be pretty undermanned today. So Zay Jones getting pressed on the outside. Definitely got to watch him. That could be it. Overshot him a little bit too much. Jordan Love does. Yeah, he's saying on me, on me, on me. That's right. And you get a look at our injuries. That is only a blip on the radar as we have a lot, a lot more injuries than that. And Kyron Williams, the big one. But Kareem Hunt has been playing pretty good to start but I'll tell you what I'm actually going to audible this because we might have Valdez Scantling on a quick step drop nope just gonna dump it down to Mike Oxmall who I just mentioned has been on a pretty good tear as of late he picks up nine to make it third and very manageable also been playing great is Kareem Hunt as well so hopefully he can pick up just this one yard that we need wow. him to get and he is and also breaks a tackle and Kareem's still going wow so maybe when Kyron Williams gets back, might have to have a little running back uh, controversy here in Toronto, or at least give Kareem some more snaps, because I'm telling you, he's he's been running good. Uh, especially last game he did good. Game prior to that he did good as well. So Kareem may just be the new man under center for us. I don't know. We'll go back to Kareem here out of the eye on a lead run. And that time, Justin Jones was there to meet us for no game. Into Nighthawks territory now at the 47. Going to come out in a little mesh concept. So let's see who gets open. That is our tight end, Logan Thomas, who is also, just like so many other Toronto T-Birds, filling in due to injury. And if memory serves, I think he also had a pretty good, pretty good game last week as well. So at least, if nothing else, our backups are... Stepping up and playing pretty good. There's Oxmall open on the out route. Open enough, at least. Love finds him, and we get this thing down to the 34. Let's continue to feed Kareem on the inside zone here. Oh, what a block there from Oxmall. He's doing everything. He's blocking. He's catching passes. At Rams fan, if you're watching this, your creative player here is really stepping up big time these last couple of weeks, and it's good to see. Setting a nice block there for Kareem Hunt. I like the fact that you're not afraid to get down and dirty in the blocking game. Not going to be a uh, George Pickens type or anything like that. Now, on the rollout, uh, try, maybe would have had Zay Jones on that uh, extended crosser downfield, but I didn't want to risk throwing a pick. 
and just decided to check it down to Kareem Hunt and he was not able to even get the ball because Jordan Love nearly got sacked. Maybe should be passing territory here, but I am going to just go ahead and try Kareem Hunt. I feel confident about it, and I mean, I can live with gain of five. Kareem Hunt also oh, averaging yeah. 11 yards to start this out, so that is pretty good. Why not go back to Kareem on the draw play? This is, I highly, highly doubt with linebackers, double A gaps, that this is going to be a blitz and it's not they're gonna drop back but nobody was there to block David on Yamada got to put a body on that guy and looks like we unfortunately are gonna have to settle for a field goal on our opening drive that looked to be pretty promising up until that point should be no problem for the Texas Longhorn legend and arguably best kicker in NFL history Justin Tucker and he boots that chip shot through no problem so settling for three you never like to see it. I mean, that was probably, I may have sold a little bit at the end of that one because probably should have tried to pass in some of those situations rather than giving it to Kareem Hunt. But got to keep the defense guessing. Don't want to become one-dimensional. And now we are going to get to see rookie or two-year man, rather, out of Indiana, subscriber on this channel, Derek Daragosa. What will he do today? Will he carve us up like uh, Jesse Buzo? did previously on the Shamrocks don't know but he is having a pretty good start to his young career starting out guns so probably a passing situation one would think and why is Rasheem Blackshear their running back they got Brian Robinson they got well I'll tell you what they didn't have they did not have Adam Thielen on a hookup but they got Brian Robinson Leonard Fournette not really sure why Rash yeah why is why is Blackshear the running back I don't know. I know I could tell that their coach was the Bill Belichick replacement from the Patriots and nice defense there by Patrick Peterson. There goes the 0 for 2 to start this one out in a third and long upcoming. Now, one thing I will tell you, Derek, is our cornerbacks and our secondary is good. So you got to be careful. You got to make calculated decisions back there. And Brandon Graham in your face. Oh, no, it's Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase in my face right in the middle. It's a disgrace. That kind of rhymes, too. Don't let me get going on the bars now. I will drop a freestyle here mid-game. But Daragosa did a good job escaping the pocket. We talked about that pre-game. He does have that uh, agility and elusibility, if you will. And that was pretty much on full display there. So let's see how he handles a bit of a pass rush, shall we? Well, now Brian Robinson into the game. He didn't handle the rush very well, only able to pick up one yard. We're going pressure again and going to press up the cornerbacks. Oh, it's Blackshear. I mean, why is my man? They, Brian Robinson, Leonard Fournette, they weren't injured either. We, we checked the roster, you know, prior to, to starting this game. They are definitely not injured. So not sure what uh, we'll call him New England coach. All the Madden OGs out there, you could tell by his face scan that that definitely is the Belichick replacement. And there is Michael Thomas. That's the one thing about these receivers, this uh, Nighthawks team. They got weapons, weapons every, everywhere for Derek Daragosa to target. And Leonard Floyd, so that's the last thing that we need. I thought I almost thought I said Leonard Fournette for a minute. That's why I kind of paused there. But that's the last thing that we need, man, is more injuries. We're going to not even have a, a roster here before too long if this if it keeps up this way. Uh, cannot afford to be losing any more guys as we're already under. Man, and there's Jamar Chase. No. I'll tell you what, boys and girls, all it's, all it's going to take for this receiving room, Leonard Floyd not going to come back. Wonderful. All it's going to take for this receiving room to get going is just a couple Big plays from Jamar Chase and Adam Thielen and also whoever else they got. I can't even think Michael Thomas. We've already seen a couple of those today, and there's Brian Robinson. Okay. All right, Brooklyn. Playing the violin, really. Really. It's a little early for that. But I was thinking, you know, I'm not really sure why this Brooklyn Nighthawks team is 1-5. I mean, going through their roster, they got players. They got talent. Not necessarily on the defensive side, but definitely on the offensive side. So this one could potentially be a shootout. Patrick Peterson, do you have some speed? Kinda. Gonna be dropped at the 23. 
and drive number two for the Thunderbirds is upcoming. All right, we're going to send Zay Jones deep. He's probably going to be my first read, and I actually like him and love found him. Thread in the needle there. We had the cornerback Levi Wallace right in the vicinity, but he was not able to make the play on the ball. And Zay Jones picks up a big gain of 29. So second and four, we got uh, just some little curl routes on the field. Let's give it to Ricky Seals Jones. Maybe shouldn't be our number one route on a play like that, but he was. And unfortunately, he dropped it. So it's going to be third and four here. We got some drags on the field. Let's see if one of them can get open. It's picked. Oh, my God. Should have been picked. That was Ife Melifonwu. And Jordan Love and the boys... Coach says go for it. You know what? I like it. Now, I know I just talked about coach suggestions and how I call them, and I typically do. But fourth and four, there is not a snowball's chance in Hades that I'm not going screen pass to Hunt. See if we can get this thing off and pick it up. See? That's why I do it. Hunt making things happen. Five for nine for 62 is Jordan Love. And luckily, the drive does continue. If this safety cheats up even the slightest, this could be Zay Jones City. He's not, but we're going to go to him anyways. Zay might have that one, and he does. Jordan Love high-pointed that ball. Zay Jones doesn't need much separation to get open. He is doing a little dance in the end zone. And again, I really, really like this uh, Brooklyn Nighthawks end zone. The color scheme, everything about it, it is pretty fresh. And I think I actually just missed that kick with Justin Tucker, too. We'll see. Good thing he is so accurate because anybody else, I probably would have missed that. But good bounce back by the T-Birds. Now, let's see if we can stop Derek Daragosa and these Brooklyn Nighthawks. And 10-7, fun uh, first quarter. We did have a good bounce back drive. Maybe he should have had an interception or two with love. But, you know, the Madden gods were smiling on us. And we'll see how Derek Daragosa and the Nighthawks respond on this drive. Then a little bit of pressure. daragosa has got Brian Robinson behind him. He's play he's uh, changing the play up, so probably changing it into a pass. He is. So we're going to have Yaya Diaby cancel blitz. And nice play wreck. I got to give you that, Derek Daragosa. I'm sure that you came out in a running set. And I'm sure once I pressed up and showed blitz, I'm sure that's what that audible was. We had Yaya Diaby out there, but he's never, I mean, even Adam Thielen in this stage of his career, he's never going to be able to stop him in coverage. And just like I said, man, this receiving room does <laughs> scare me a little bit. I mean, their receivers are just are just too good. There's no doubt about it. They are just too good. And uh, now the screen is shaking. That's awesome. Home team has improved catching. That's all, all that they need. Wow. Uh, let's go to Oxmaw on the screen. That worked well last time. Uh, not the best juke, though. That one was kind of in slow-mo. But doesn't matter because Oxmaw was still able to get the first down. Second and nine here, five yards away from midfield. They say Zay Jones should be my first read. I'm not sure, but we are going to streak him up the field. Let's see what that safety does. Um, Safety ain't doing nothing, but oh, my God. How in the heck did Brian? I mean, Brian Branch is good, yes. But I thought for sure if we lobbed that up for Seals Jones, that he would have caught that with ease. And it's almost like Brian Branch knew the play we were calling. Imagine that. Hmm. Imagine that in Madden. Zay Jones also getting doubled. We got uh, Kyle Hughes check and Hunt in the game now. And, oh, I had Hughes check there. I had him. But it's going to be a big sack from Baron Browning, three-year man from Ohio State. That is not what the Thunderbirds needed. We did not need to take a sack and punt the ball there because uh, Derek Daragosa and the Nighthawks, they look good. And as I said, probably going to be a, a heavy dose of zone coverage here. And uh, that time Blackshear wasn't able to do much on the return. Adam Thielen, uh, two receptions already for 72 yards. Wow. Going to use her on Bobby Wagner. See if he can man the middle. Now, I bet you Derek Ghost is probably changing it to a run. No, he's not. Where is he going to go? It's Adam Thielen, man. Old grandfather Adam Thielen. Old great-grandpappy Thielen over here. Turning back the hands of time, looking like he's in his prime Minnesota Viking days as he's almost at 90 or 100 yards already. And uh, see if Derek Ghost finally gives it to Robinson. He will. Actually, pretty good cut there. And Robinson picks up six. 
And just like that, the Nighthawks are already into our territory. Maybe it's time to, uh, to guess pass and shade inside, yeah? That seems like a winning idea, and Johnu Smith open in the middle. Daragosa is carving us up. Dr. Daragosa, surgeon there under center. He's looking uh, looking better than Aaron Rodgers, who's, who he's now playing over. So that's uh, always a good thing, and nice little fun storyline. Oh, come on, man. Carlos Dunlap in coverage is, is just never going to work. But I just thought about this. They got Aaron Rodgers. He's benched. We got Jordan Love as our quarterback, so Jordan Love kind of, uh, I'm sure, every time he does something good, which hasn't been often in this one, maybe giving a little glance over there to the bench. There goes the coming out single back. It's These play fakes are getting us. And I mean, what? How? Why? Who? When? Where? Now, now Thielen's playing the violin. Look, these Brooklyn Nighthawks division rival... Things always get a little tense. They've been playing the violin so far all game, and they're about to go up by 11. And if we don't score a touchdown and respond here, this thing could get ugly, and it could get ugly fast. How about draw with Hunt? I just realized, too, the Nighthawks are going to get the ball after halftime, so kind of definitely got to score here. I mean, obviously, but four and a half minutes to go, man. The last thing... The last thing I want to see happen is the Nighthawks double dip. I mean, that literally, literally could be ball game. So second and three here. Clock is ticking. Ball's on the 33. Coming out play action and about as scantling is open. Okay. I mean, not going to turn down a touchdown, but kind of almost thought about uh, having him go down just to preserve this clock. But you never, I mean, that would just be foolish. That would be straight tomfoolery. I'm not in the business of doing tomfoolery, so obviously I'm going to try to score. But that clock, I'm not liking how much time is left on that puppy. Can't be too conservative with the run here because still got to score. I mean, that still is prime objective number one. Let's test the outside. Also did flip the play as well. Going to send out Zay Jones and just need a couple good blocks to help Hunt steal the edge. And thought for a second he would have had the speed. But wasn't able to outrun James Houston. It actually ends up losing a yard on that one. All right, this is a big one here. Third and five. Got to find a way to pick this up. And oh, my God. The pressure. I think that was uh, Taquan Graham. No, that was Josh Uche, maybe. Not 100% sure. Baron Browning. Okay. I was close. And we're going to let this tick down to the two-minute warning. But we're going to have to kick a field goal. And we have got to dig deep. And we can't let the Nighthawks score. They got a chance to double dip. That would not be good. That would be terrible manners. Don't want to see any double dipping going on here in the game. So let's go ahead and take our three. Definitely not going to go for it on fourth and 12. And also got to make sure that I don't miss this one here, which I don't think I did. Kind of cutting it close, but luckily we have probably the most accurate kicker in the SFL. Where is Thielen? He's lined up slot. So Bobby Wagner, maybe I'll have him play a little bit. Oh, nice. Nice uh, defense there by DJ Reed. Laid out Jamar Chase. We need the DJ Reed that we saw last week. DJ Reed had, I think, I want to say two picks last week. We need that, and I also need, again, it's, it's got to be have somebody on Adam Thielen at all times, and when you do that, it's one of these other great receivers, Michael Thomas, breaking tackles. I mean, Derek Ghost is at 269. I mean, I mean, what do you do? What do I do? I mean, I'm going to put, I mean, cornerback matchup by overall that shouldn't matter um but i am gonna kind of drop the boys back a little bit i would rather see Derek do uh you know some check downs stuff like that we've really only been seeing him target downfield and pretty much it's been adam thielen for the most part a couple times jamar chase but we'll see what he does here with 56 seconds to go it is going to be chase again and we can't tackle him i mean this one i mean i'm gonna call a timeout because with 47 seconds left, I might just have to do something crazy. I mean, they're going to obviously score here, no doubt about it. But, you know, the way that they're playing, like, I might have to take some deep shots and try to score with 47 seconds left. Can we stop? Brian Robinson almost don't want to. Not going to matter. And I was trying to. I was mashing X. But, yeah, this don't look like a 1-5 team to me. What do you guys think? What's your synopsis?
This does not look like a 1-5 and five team. And we don't look like a 5-1 and one team either, I can tell you that. I can't let the Nighthawks get the ball back. Uh, kind of like Valda Scantling audible here, but no. We're just going to go screen pass to Hunt. See if anything happens. It's probably going to be. But you know what? Could also be uh, roughing the passer, too. And if that's the case, that's going to end up being a great play. It is roughing the passer. Okay. So we are pretty much already in field goal range for Justin Tucker. I mean, well within field goal range. But going to also flirt with the idea of scoring here. I mean, that was huge. That was a boneheaded play by the Nighthawks. Going to need some protection, but we could have possibly Zay Jones or somebody here getting open. And you know what? We're going to go ahead and try it. Let him too far. Or did we? Oh, they say toe tap touchdown. That one might get reviewed. But if that stands... I mean, Zay Jones dancing like it's going to stand, obviously. But if that stands, that might be one of the better catches I've seen in my entire time playing Madden. Let's get a look at those feet. There's one. Oh, my God. He tapped. And also, I mean, he just kind of like swam through the field. Jordan Love is hyped. They are going to booth review it, but I don't think it's going to matter. That one should stand. And it does. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That was something. Great, great throw by Love. Put it only in a spot where Zay Jones could get it. Now, here's the question. Is 25 seconds too much for the Nighthawks to score? Which they won't. So that will be the end of the first half. Wild first half. I mean, just passing yards from both teams, especially Daragosa, but also Love, too. Got to give this man his flowers. He's also playing great as well. 28 to 20 going into the locker room. And as far as shifting our focuses, I mean, Kareem Hunt run inside. We're going to go with that because he's been playing great. And it's got to be defend medium pass for Derek Gosa. I would not be upset with seeing some little checkdowns from him, uh, even if it results in completions. Like right now, it's the big chunk plays that are killing us. So I want to kind of see some stuff underneath, and I will actually allow that as well. And the question of the day is, can we stop Adam Thielen? I mean, we've gotten virtually no pressure here. Would love to have Miles Garrett back. And last thing we need, my God, is Brian Robinson to get going. I'm, I'm surprised this is an eight-point game. I really am. I mean, I know that was a heck of a catch there by Zay Jones to end the half but to, or, you know, to close out the half. But really surprised this is not more of a route than what it is. Bobby Wagner was getting there. Almost got to Derek, but uh, he does find Jamar Chase for a nice little check down of five. Send a little bit of pressure here with Wagner and oh, 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 I should have just kept going. Nice defense there by Diaby. I thought it was going to be a play fake and I had that sack with Bobby Wagner. No doubt about it, but I decided to uh, I kind of, you know, cheated back out because I was just assuming it was going to be a play action. Now I am going to OK, uh, Derek changing the play here. I was going to say, I am going to have Dunlap kind of guard or at least shade around the area of Adam Thielen. And where's Derek going to go? He's going for it all. But that one's going to be out of bounds. So for the first time today, other than the kickoffs, we are going to see Ryan Wright, the punter, come back. And we got a chance to tie this one up here. So hopefully Jordan Love and Kareem Hunt can keep the good times rolling. They have played very good in this game. And uh, feel like that's going to be a rarity, seeing punts from this Nighthawks team. So got to put a good drive together here. Come out gun here with Kareem Hunt. Going to be a run to him. Hopefully we can get some good blocks. Nobody was really able to hold for too long. Didn't have a guard pulling on that one either, which would have made life a lot easier for sure. Coach is calling screen, and I like it. Third and four here. Don't need to take any huge shots downfield. But I feel confident that Kareem can pick up this screen, which he is going to do with ease. Uh, maybe not with ease. It was a little close. But that was a good play call, and we do keep the drive going. All right, we'll come out gun here with Love. Got to Valda Scantling on a little stick route. We'll go ahead and check it down. I mean, actually ended up falling forward, picking up seven. So I will certainly take that. How about Kareem up the middle on pistol? And, oh, nice blocks there. Nice blocks there. We had a good lead block from, I believe, our tight end. Not quite sure. But anyways, someone did set a really good block. Levi Wallace ends up 
getting us. And we'll go ahead and actually stay in the pistol. But this time it is going to be play action. And I see Zay Jones getting pressed again. And the safety is also coming down as well. Zay Jones might have this. And he does. The Jordan Love Zay Jones connection is on full display here. I don't really know why I didn't definitely did not mean to. I'm going to have to call a freaking timeout here, man. Wow. Let's see what Hunt can do. Hoping that uh, fullback Kyle Uves check can kind of lead the way. He did for a moment, but Josh Uche, I was talking about these linebackers not being very good, but I feel like the combination of Josh Uche and Baron Browning, they've, uh, they've kind of been all over the field today. So second and eight here. Got a levels concept working, and somebody's open there. It's Valdez Scantling. These quarterbacks are going at it. Good old-fashioned duel here in Brooklyn. I'm assuming their stadium is called Nighthawks Field. I didn't the Hawks Nest, maybe. I don't know. I didn't look at it really pre-game. So third and two, mesh concept, or do I audible this into a run? Nope. We're gonna stay true. <laughs> And somebody, oh my God, the pressure. Calais Campbell and somebody else got to love. It was there in a heartbeat. Brooklyn has three sacks. We have none. And I mean, we got to kick it here, right? We There's there's no way we can't. Let me go ahead and drill this here with Jay Tuck, which we will with ease. So we draw a little bit closer, but squandered opportunity as we had a chance to tie it up on the scoreboard. And can we force another punt from Daragosa and this high-powered offense. Not 100% sure, but we're really, really going to have to try our diddly darndest. Good old-fashioned man coverage. Where's Thielen? Thielen, I need... He's a single coverage, as actually all the receivers are. And that is just going to be Jonu Smith. Can't wrap him up. Wow. Antoine Winfield pushes him out of bounds. And now Daragosa does, in fact, go over 300 yards. So Derek... Shout out to you, brother. You are making my life a living uh, H-E double hockey sticks in this one. Hell, if you didn't know what, what that reference was. And there is Ra Rasheem Blackshear. Don't know why he's getting so many carries. Uh, well, two. Okay. He's been on the field a lot, though. That much I do know for sure. I think we go press coverage here. We got some blitzers. If we can... I'm really worried about Thielen, though. That much is for sure. And Brian Robinson, oh, slipped a couple of tackles. You got to be kidding me. He never did that for me in Sentinels franchise. Never. That's why I traded his dumb ass. And uh, wow, man. So if it's not Daragosa through the air, which he has definitely cooled off here coming out of the locker room. But if that wasn't enough, now we got to worry about apparently Brian Robinson breaking every single tackle left and right. This Brooklyn Nighthawks team, no way they should be 1-5 because they are freaking good. Going to need to pull a rabbit out of the hat or a couple here because I'm not liking the way that this thing is going. Love, do not fumble the ball. You're not beyond getting cut. Actually, you are. No way I would cut Jordan Love. First of all, I love, I love Love, and I am a huge Packers fan, as uh, I'm sure some of you guys know. Uh, really, really excited, by the way. Side note for the Packers season next year with Love. Think he's going to be the real deal, but need him to be the real deal. Here, throw it away. I'm going to get grounding. I'm going to get grounding, and I'm not a happy boy. Oh, shut up, ref. I don't like you. Go somewhere. Aww. Tell you what you do. You grab the petroleum jelly lube up and get ready for the ride. So, can anybody possibly get open? Logan Thomas on the high point. We don't have Darren Waller out there. He's injured, and this game is slowly, slowly slipping away from us. Looking like we may just go 5-2 and two, unless somebody on defense can make a huge play, whether it be a sack, a forced fumble, an interception, something. But we can't just let Brian Robinson and Derek Gosa do the things that they have been doing recently. Brian Robinson has three touchdowns. I mean, come on. And I really think the answer starts with pressure. So LaMarcus Joyner... Uh, actually, no. Bobby Wagner. My apologies. Somebody is going to have to get in the backfield. Wagner starting to get there. There we go. Brandon Graham and Carlos Dunlap. First sack of the afternoon. Where's Thielen? Got a clue in on Thielen. He's, oh, it's, it is Thielen, but it's a little screen. Oh, thank God. Yaya Diaby. If Thielen would have picked up 12 on a screen, on a screen, 
I really, really would have raged. We'll see if uh, Wright punts this ball. They're leaving the door cracked. I mean, there's a tiny, tiny, there's just a little draft coming in. Not even really a breeze. There's a slight draft coming in, and sometimes that's all you need. Two-score ball game, and we're going to have one quarter to get it done. It might be Zay Jones again. Let's see what that safety does. I'm going for him. Why wouldn't I? Oh, nice defense there. Not sure why Melifonwu didn't try to pick that. It's like he only really tried to swat it. Could have had, I think, maybe an easy interception. Looked like it could have been. I think um, Kareem Hunt, I need you to block for me because somehow the pressure has been here today. Not 100% sure how. And somebody is open there. It's Zay Jones. Why wouldn't it be? Zay Jones now well over 100 yards. And we are smack dab on the 50-yard line. Now we got some long, long curl routes going. Let's put uh, Hunt on a wheel. But also maybe Kyle Yu's check. Not really typically utilized in the passing game. But he can catch it when he needs to. The big U's best fullback in the game. Picks up a big, big first down. Getting the ball down to the 34. I mean, did we just streak Zay Jones again? Like, they're pressing him on almost every play. Okay, no. That time, the safety did go for him. And I don't know where the heck I'm throwing the ball there. I don't know how the Nighthawks don't have a pick so far in this game. Because they really should. Brian Branch definitely, definitely let one slip through his grasp there. And an interception really uh, effectively ends this game like we can't afford that to happen and there's logan thomas hanging on for the clutch reception he has played good for us this season just need about a half of a yard here for hunt he's gonna get that with ease and also then some and that there's no way that's holding if that's holding oh my god who's getting fired today who is the pink slip being handed out to not you Zay Jones. Man, oh man, instead of having the ball at like, what, would have been the 12-yard line maybe? Something like that. Now we got uh, 22 yards to go. Zay Jones also getting double teamed wisely, I would say. And oh, love. No, I should have hit Logan Thomas. I had Logan Thomas. I just missed him. Five yards, I'll take it. But that would have been a key, key play that uh, we really needed. And the only thing I will say, this drive is kind of taking a long time longer than it should so we need something to happen now logan catch it he had a chance make a play on the ball and it's four down territory throughout third and five i'm rolling out on play action and i'm probably looking for zay jones because it's been zay jones all day and it remains zay jones he might be close to 200 yards i mean he's up there and a lot of these catches that he's making high degree of difficulty so that was much needed. And we're going to go ahead and kick the field goal. But if the Nighthawks score on this next drive, it's pretty much ball game. All right, coming out nickel here. But I'm going to use their control on Poyer because this will probably be a run to Brian Robinson. No, it's not. They're still going past. Wow. A little dump off underneath to Johnny Smith for three yards. I'll take it. Time I will guess pass. Wouldn't be surprised if it was a run to Robinson, which it looks like it will be. But we got guys sort of there. And this is third and four. Robinson averaging eight yards per carry. And the question here, I think we got to send a little bit of pressure from the edge. It's not Adam Thielen's side. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> that would have been unfortunate. Let's see what Thielen does. He's, he's going to cook me, isn't he? Yep. He sure is. I mean, I had Carlos Dunlap in zone coverage and nobody was in the middle because I was sending a blitz from the right side. That could have been the kill shot right there. It's Zay Jones and Adam Thielen are having a good old fashioned duel in this one. Now let's see if Derragosa finally goes to Brian Robinson here. He should, which he will not actually. And I tried to have Zach Cunningham come back, and you got to be freaking kidding me. Now it's Colby Parkinson. And we're just going to assume it's going to be a run here. We're going to pretty much send everything but the kitchen sink into the backfield. If he passes it and torches me, then whatever, which is exactly what he's going to do. And Adam Thielen is hurt. Good. He's, he's too old to be getting all these receptions. That's why he got hurt. You, tra you, you just... You wore the tires too thin. The tread on the tires was not there. So, but too little too late probably. Irvin, can I have you please get into the backfield? And Derek Gosa is just, oh, he fumbled it. Oh, no. Oh, Diaby. This is our chance. 
This is our chance. Derek goes to on the fumble. That was the last thing that could have happened for the Nighthawks. This is our chance. Wow. If we win this game because of that, that will be something. Who is going to get open for me? Bout of Scantling, open enough, and oh my god. That ball bounced up there like a freaking pinball. Almost into the lap of Jeff Okuda. I mean, I think this might be four down territory too. I know there's a lot of time left, but not much. And there is Oxmaw making a huge catch. Just get out of bounds. Don't want to risk the fumble. And we get the ball up to the 39-yard line. So we are moving on this drive. I mean, this game is nuts. Super fun. Don't get me wrong. But it's just absolutely nuts. Jordan Love and Derek Derogosa going back and forth. Adam Thielen and uh, Zay Jones going back and forth. Brian Robinson and Kareem Hunt going back and forth. And if that free safety blitzes, this could be Zay Jones time. He's not gonna. Let's just go underneath to Logan Thomas. I will certainly take that. I'm pretty much speechless right now. Kareem Hunt, need you to block, brother. That would be mighty swell of you. Ox Mall's going streaking. Indecent exposure over there on that side. And uh, ah, just go underneath to Logan Thomas. I'll tell you what. Logan is making some tough, tough catches in this one. Final play before the two-minute warning. I would let it run, but I kind of like Valdez Scantling. Oh, man, on the RPO, but it didn't end up working. Kareem fighting forward, and uh, that's the two-minute warning. They really want me to pass this, but I don't think I'm going to. Going away from coach suggestions here. Ooh, but you know what? It's got to be. Zay Jones is going to be uncovered, probably. Should be like a two-step drop and sling, which it will be. Zay Jones is just playing at an all-time level. I mean, he's got to be over 200 now. And we got to really play this thing smart. Yes, we have to score. But if we play our cards right, potentially the Nighthawks could never see the ball again or see the ball with like only a few seconds left. All right, Kareem, I'm counting on you. Well, I also needed uh, our tap center, Ryan Kelly, to make just a little bit better of a block. And that was one that we needed to be uh, to be pretty good because now we got to score. I mean, I'm setting Zay Jones again. Like, he might not be covered on this one either, uh, which he is. That sucks. But, ooh, Logan Thomas couldn't haul that one in. Love over 400 now, but a big, big third and nine coming up. Coach is saying TE attack, and I like it, although don't think I'm going to be able to roll out to the left. I am not. I'm just going to get sacked. That could be it. That could be it right there. And fourth and 15. I mean, we got one, one more shot here. Somebody hopefully can get open on zone coverage. We're just gonna send up a shot to Valdez Scantling and it's gonna drift out of bounds. Well, what a game. Derek Daragosa, you are going to hand me my first subscriber loss. It's my third time playing a team with subscribers on it. Prior to this, I was 2-0. And this one was fun and exciting from the opening whistle until the last. And going to be very curious to check on these stats here. There is going to be some super, super storylines in this one. Uh, Coach Damon Sanders is not happy. And I'm not either. But I am happy for Derek Daragosa, subscriber quarterback. And remember, guys, if you're still watching up until this point, you can see your player on full display, just like Derek here. Uh, all you got to do is comment down below. And I can add you to the SFL. So, Oh, almost 800 yards combined between these two quarterbacks. No interceptions thrown. Three touchdowns for Love, two for Daragosa. And it was just a battle back and forth. Battle back and forth in the running back department, too. Now, Hunt did not have any touchdowns, but 97 yards for Brian Robinson, 87 yards for Kareem Hunt. Brian averaged almost nine yards per carry. Thielen and Zay Jones both had eight catches. Both had way over 100 yards. Five touchdowns combined between these two, but... Thielen did get injured at the end, and he is not a spring chicken anymore, so curious to know if he'll miss time. Baron Browning was all over the place. Carlos Dunlap, Brandon Graham had a couple sacks there as well. But overall, great game. Going to take the L, 
and let's check on our subscribers and see how you guys did in this week of the SFL. Orlando Orbits and the Antlers. Couple subscribers on these teams as well. So with the Orbits, we'll get a look at Johnny Waters, the running back. He had 17 attempts for 80 yards, no touchdowns, but still played a very, very good impact in that game as well. And then checking on the safety flash Parker here. Where is he at? He did not have any stats in that game. Very, very interesting. And then we also have a new cornerback on the Antlers. That would be C. Ben. And he had no big turnovers, but seven tackles. Solid, solid game for the corner out of Southern Miss. Oakland Wizards got linebacker James Briner on this team. They did take the L to the Louisville Desperados, but we'll take a look and see what my man Briner was able to do. And he also did not have any stats. So come on. Offensive and defensive coordinators got to make sure we get these subscribers involved in some of these games Dublin Shamrocks now on a two game winning streak. So check it on subscriber QB Jesse Buzo only 140 yards. That's weird, but two passing touchdowns. I feel like in this league a lot of these quarterbacks are not like even uh, uh, Josh Allen not getting a lot of yards on the Virginia Beach Blues, but Efficient game from Buzo, and his boys are now on a two-game winning streak. San Juan Tigers, who we're playing next episode, several subscribers on this team. So let's first check on the receiving stats here. See if any of these guys on the... Yeah, man, I don't know. I do not know. Nick Stoyer, St. James. I, I got you guys ordered on the depth chart. I promise you. I do it uh, before every game. I go and look. I go and look at the teams, and... Unfortunately, just, uh, I don't know, just not not getting you worked into the sets. And uh, Dior Love did have a tackle, so not a crazy performance. I'm curious to see these players in-game when we play them next week. Sentinels take the L to the Montreal Monarchs and QB Rocky DiBernardo, 212 yards. And I mean, look, again, Joe Burrow, 178 yards. Our quarterback just put up almost 400 against us. So don't know what the CPU is doing, but Rocky... He played okay, two touchdowns, one pick, but fortunately his boys did take the L against the Monarchs. Honolulu Dragons though get the victory over the Steamers. Brock Purdy is the quarterback on that team, but we are more concerned about the punting from Jack Mavros. He had a touchback, long of 47 and no punts inside the 20. So not a crazy game, but I feel like Jack's been a really, really stellar punter this whole entire season. Four subscribers total between these two teams. The Black Knights did get the dub against the Armadillos and quarterback Jaden Hayes, 204 yards, no touchdowns and a pick. But ultimately, I guess it uh, didn't end up mattering because they do pick up the win. Now, uh, Bjorn Jeffrey tight end on the Albuquerque Armadillos. That's what I'm talking about. A touchdown, four catches for 41 yards. And then Caleb Hayes, the brother, uh, one catch for 10 yards. So nothing crazy, but his boys did get the victory. And then check it on Arturo Esquivel. He had five tackles and a sack and a deflected pass. So Arturo has been all over the field in that linebacker position. And last but not least, the Melbourne Dreadnoughts got the win over the Chicago Elks. And we have a new receiver on this team, newer. Alexander Klublek, and he had three receptions for 33 yards. No touchdowns, but his boys did get the victory. We just played them, as a matter of fact, a couple episodes ago. So that is the subscriber recap. Gonna go ahead and stick a fork in this one. This episode's gonna be long enough, I presume. And if you guys are still watching at this point, comment something down below and you are the truth. So that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.